Did you know that John Hayes Hammond Jr. built a secret wine cellar in Hammond Castle Museum? While stories about secret rooms and passages inside the castle are more legend than fact, there are some exceptions. In addition to the passage between the upper hall and the great hall that allowed for large furniture to be lowered down between floors, see our previous episode on the cathedra for more on that, Hammond disguised a secret wine cellar behind an ingenious facade. Located next to the war room and kitchen, the cellar is accessed via a door masquerading as a set of blue shelves inside the war room, underneath the mural. When closed, the door blends in with the rest of the shelving. It was necessary to hunch down to actually enter the cellar, but that was a small price to pay for secrecy. Why the need to be so discreet about a wine cellar? One word, prohibition. Hammond Castle Museum was designed and built in the 1920s, when alcoholic beverages were made illegal to produce, transport, import, and sell in the United States. The historical reasons for this are somewhat complex, dating back to the 19th century, having religious roots in the temperance movement, as well as progressive political movements in multiple parties. These groups felt that alcohol consumption led to immoral behavior, crime, corruption, and violence. Ultimately, their views won out, and the 18th Amendment to the Constitution mandated prohibition from 1920 to 1933, when it was repealed via the 21st Amendment. Massachusetts, home to Hammond Castle Museum, was quick to ratify the 18th Amendment, with many supporters living there. That said, its coastal nature also resulted in it becoming a haven for rum runners, who transported bootlegged alcohol. Just across the three-mile limit separating U.S. from international waters off the coast of Massachusetts, there existed a rum row where ships would load the contraband onto speedboats. This smuggling enterprise reportedly sought out Hammond's help in providing the technology for radio-controlled rum boats in 1931. According to the inventor, the criminal syndicate sought him out at his Hammond Castle Museum home and offered to buy his technology for at least $50,000, which would be roughly $839,000 in today's money, although he also claimed that he could name his own figure for the data. While Hammond's finances were not as stable as they had been prior to the 1929 stock market crash, he claimed that he refused the illegal offer. A more dramatic, and likely less accurate, telling of this encounter appeared in issue number 18 of Real Fact Comics as part of its biography of Hammond, but that's a story for another episode of the Hammond Weekly. Given that the US government paid Hammond 15 times the amount the Rum Runners had offered for his technology the year following this offer, it seems that the inventor made a wise decision to refuse getting involved in their enterprise. Notably, however, he later purchased a former rum running boat, the Diamantina, in 1935. This was heavily converted and rechristened the Odysseus III, the last of his Greek hero-themed yachts. Back to the wine cellar itself, while Hammond might not have wanted to participate in an alcohol smuggling criminal syndicate, he was happy to keep a private stash of wine for his own use. While states varied in how they enforced prohibition, Massachusetts had a history of strict alcohol laws. Indeed, nearby Rockport was a so-called dry town prohibiting the sale of alcohol for 150 years, from 1856 until 2006, and only allowed its purchase in stores a mere two years ago, as of the time of this episode's writing. Given this history, we can't blame Hammond for being cautious in hiding his wine cellar. We hope you enjoyed this video, but there is a lot more to explore about John Hayes Hammond Jr., his inventions, and his collection of art and artifacts. We invite you to visit us at Hammond Castle Museum in Gloucester, Massachusetts to learn more.